Hi there, let's have a look at game 9 presented in the DeepMind paper. So this is Alpha Zero against Stockfish, and we have a French defence by transposition. It starts with d4. After e6, e4 is played, so we have a French defence position, and we have knight c3, knight f6, e5, the Steinitz variation. Now, from a continuous installation perspective, there is a pawn on e5 which is controlling squares deep into the opponent's territory. It's a nice space advantage. The Steinitz variation is very, very interesting. We see here knight f3, c takes d4. So this is releasing the central tension. Maybe knight c6 is to be preferred. So for example, this position has been seen in a lot of games and it should be about even. So c takes d4 is quite a commitment. It releases some of the central tension. We see knight b5, bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop c5, and now b4, bishop e7, knight b takes d4. So it seems as though white's position, white's center is quite solid here. Knight c6, c3, a5, b5, knight takes d4, c takes d4. So these pawns are controlling quite a few squares on that sixth rank. It's quite interesting. Knight b6, we have a4, knight c4, and now bishop d3 is played. Now here, Stockfish plays knight takes d2. White well, has to be very, very careful here. There's a brilliant way of playing this now. Can you spot it for 100 points? And there's a potential for getting minus 1,000 points if you get the wrong move here. Okay. <laughs> so king takes d2 is actually played. Funny enough. It really fits the position. If queen takes d2, ouch, minus 1,000 points. We've just lost our queen. If knight takes d2, this is also painful, actually, bishop b4, because here, bishop c3, double attacking our rook and d4. This is very, very painful. Black would be much better. So king takes d2 is basically forced. We have bishop d7, king e3, b6. What an interesting position with the king on e3. We now have g4, so it looks as though like playing for the formatic looking f5, potentially. But with the king on e3, is that really on the cards? Isn't there things like bishop g5 check? White would have to be careful. We have h5. <clears throat> queen g1. H takes g. Queen takes g4. Bishop f8. And now h4. Queen e7. Rook hc1. g6. So the f5 plan seems to have gone completely out of the window, right? It's not possible in any case. And the king's in a bad place for f5. But just keep keep a watch out for this possibility, though. We have rook c2. So here, king d8 is played. We have rook ac1. So look at white's position. These kind of pawns, these advanced pawns, are representative, in my view, of long-term installations they are controlling these great squares we have queen e8 rook c7 rook c8 so one pair of rooks comes off and now rook c6 bishop b7 the rook goes back if taking on b6 the king can play to c7 well be forced to play an exchange sacrifice and actually the resulting position here is just even so rook c2 instead we have king d7, knight g5, bishop e7. So if bishop a8, white is actually threatening here. Quite a nasty move. Can you see what it is for 10 points? Test your visualization and tactics here. For 100 points, what would you play here? Yeah, bishop takes g6 is possible. f takes, knight takes e6. So there's a big threat of rook c7 checkmate. And if queen takes e6 to address it, rook c7 check, and we're winning the queen. And in this particular position, black's pieces are pretty hopeless against the queen. The rook's tied down because of, you know, queen f7 check to win the bishop. It's, it's, hor it's actually a hopeless position for black. So bishop e7 was played. And now there's an absolute stunner 
of a move here, which is is it's just unbelievable. Actually, I would say it's it's really really <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. Basically, so can you see what white plays? It's actually bishop takes g6, and you might think, oh, well that that's obvious, isn't it? Because if f takes, we're we're just taking on e6, right? Or knight takes e6. You know that looks crushing, right? That's obvious. The thing is, bishop takes g5 is possible. Well, let's have a look at this. In fact, f takes queen takes e6 check, queen takes b6 check. Yeah, is resulting in checkmate. So bishop takes g5, and now. The amazing point is about to be revealed. First, queen takes g5. So absolutely amazing, this, this point is, that's being made here. We have f takes g6. And there's a major, basically, a major, major installation of an advanced protected pawn. So really, this is fusing super dynamic play with super positional play coming together for this absolute stunner of a move. It's, for me, an iconic Alva Zero move from this match. Absolutely iconic. So can you guess it or try and work it out for 500 points? If you can see the variations behind it, all the more power to you. So I'll, I'm about to reveal. You might want to pause the video here. So what is the, the point? It's just ridiculously powerful however way it's cut or sliced this next move it's ridiculously powerful it's f5 so this pawn break is so so powerful so what is going on stockfish replied rook g8 so we get an installation potentially with f6 but the thing is let's have a look at this if bishop a8 actually we can play forget f6 we can, in here in this position we can play queen f6 Rook f8, we have f takes, and here we have just taking the rook. So bishop a8 doesn't help. E takes doesn't help because it's opened up access. So queen f6 actually threatens queen d6, chatmate. And on queen f8, this is super calculation, really. Just to put the mate on the board for fun, rook f8, queen d6 is chatmate. So queen f8, there's queen takes b6, and the black king's in big trouble. Let's say this position, white can actually play, believe it or not, the quiet and crushing move, <laughs> king f3. Black's not up to much here. So as example, if rook c8, queen takes g6 is, is possible. Yeah, letting the rook hang, this is super calculation, king d8, Queen f8 check, and then we have, yeah, guess what? We have b6 check, and then we win the queen with a winning position. Let's look at this again with rook g8. We have e6 check, and here rook c7 will be crushing. This would be a, a rook on the seventh. We don't even have to take the queen. This way of playing it is even stronger than taking the queen, threatening mate on e7, and then take the queen here. This is just end of game, basically. So yeah, e takes really, it's it's running into queen f6, exploiting that aspect of the pawn break, the, the opening up here. The e pawn was a shield to d6 in particular. d6 in particular. Amazing. And if g takes, then we have queen g7 check. If queen e7, we can just either take the rook with a big advantage, or we can go with rook c7 check. And this is brutal as well. So yes, it's all amazing. So here, rook g8 is tried. And now, believe it or not, not f6, queen h6. Yeah, this this is really creating this big threat of queen h7. We have queen f7. If bishop a8, queen h7 check here, we have queen takes g8. Or rook c7 check is also good. So the same kind of tactics, rook c7 to deflect the king and then taking is also good. We're just taking the rook. So queen f7 is tried. And now we have f6. And this is really an amazing installation. So this, can I like to call it continuous installation strategy. Remember the pawns were the ones from the opening. And now this pawn 
it's clawing into so many squares of the opponent's position and it is like this kung fu chess variant where you're installing all these advanced pawns this is like amazing we're bishop down here but how does black create any play in this position how how is it actually possible to create any play black's really tied up we have king d8 and now king d2 gives the idea that the queen has now the option of queen e3 and can bounce back like this and go onto this diagonal all away from this light square bishop can't influence the light uh, the uh, dark squares so king d7 we have rook c1 king d8 and now queen e3 queen f8 so if instead of queen f8 bishop a3 queen a3 this position white could just take on f8 here and play rook g1 <laughs> and yeah this other part of the installation of position is, is hopeless that bishop just a prisoner so white can just play like this and then h6 and then h7 and then here rook takes g4 and this is easily winning rook g7 check forget taking the bishop we're just queening so queen f8 is tried queen c3 and we have queen b4 it's very miserable if queen f7 we can actually play queen a3 and this position we actually have a nudging move which is quite crushing in f7 so here if rook h8 because if taking we we're going to take the rook with queening with check so let's say rook h8 queen d6 check believe it or not this position is absolutely winning for white so say bishop c8 h5 is possible and then rook g1 threatening rook g8 and this is you know black can't do anything here and if, if we look at this again say rook f8 we have rook c7 and again this is hopeless for black black's not doing anything here so the king could just advance into the position like this and that f8 queening is going to happen to win the rook it's absolutely a winning position amazing stuff so queen b4 is tried we have queen takes b4 a takes rook g1 yeah <laughs> b3 king c3 bishop c8 king takes b3 bishop d7 king b4 and yeah there's a pass pawn potential over here as well it's overstretching black's resources bishop e8 rook a1 king c7 so if g5 yeah we're just going to take and then this position a5 this is going to be in white's favor for example this infiltration into the position is just crushing a rook coming to the seventh like this with rook g7 and then f7 we're going to be queening that pawn again so king c7 was tried we have a5 bishop d7 we have bishop d7 a takes b6 check king takes b6 rook a6 check king b7 king c5 rook d8 rook a2 rook c8 check the king goes in bishop e8 king e7 and it's just hopeless g5 is tried h takes and now black resigns so move 52 h takes g5 black resigns the operators resign if king b6 we're just going to take on e6 and we've got all of these connected past pawns now to play with so for example this situation <laughs> we've got loads of connected past pawns it's absolutely a dream scenario for white to have such immense past pawn power absolutely crushing stuff so this is an absolutely remarkable positional dynamic game it's like the best of both worlds the absolute best of continuous insulation strategy of positional chess but coming with the tactics you know the f5 break to see the tactical implications so clearly of f5 just a whole peace sacrifice that was just absolutely amazing in my view this whole concept and the king on e3 to start off with this is just an out of this world game but in particular this sacrifice is really phenomenal 
phenomenal. And you know, queen h6, not even playing f6, queen h6 first, and then f6. It's what can black do? <laughs> Yeah, this is just such a powerful position. Look at all the claws in black's position with all these pawns. These actually are worth quite a lot, clawing into the black position, These all these advanced pawns. It's worth the bishop here. It's absolutely an amazing demonstration. Power, powerful, super powerful positional chess. I'd say with a continuous installation strategy, of continuously installing certain things into the position. And being prepared to sacrifice, you know, pawns or pieces to get these installations. So phenomenal to witness. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. Thanks so much. All comments, questions, likes and subscribes. Really appreciated. Thanks so much.